I'm going to run through a dissection today for you and I've chosen um, this Lavatera flower which I've just cut from the stem. They're fairly freshly opened flowers. You should always investigate the stages of your flowers before you start. You can see this one's a more recently opened flower than this one. Um, what you can see inside is that you can see the male parts, the anthers, are showing here. You can't actually see the stigma and style because it's encased within this column, within the flower. On this one, which is an older flower, you can see the stigma here um, has emerged from that column. And that, in this flower, is because it has uh, two phases. It has a male phase which comes first and a female phase which comes later. Um, once um, you start to investigate your flowers you'll see these different phases within them. This is a typical uh, um, flower with both male and female parts but there are other versions that are which we'll talk about later. But This is a um, hermaphrodite flower or androgynous. So I'm going to take this one, which is the, the male version. The equipment I'm going to use is, I've got a piece of foam board, or you can use a cutting mat, a um, sharp scalpel or craft knife. I've um, got a ruler here with millimetres on it. I've also got either some dressmaking pins or these um, wires, which are an oasis wire, which is a very fine, flexible wire. What I'm going to aim to do initially is to cut straight through the centre of the flower to dissect it. It doesn't always go to plan, sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. You need to, it's best to choose something with lots of flowers on it so you can um, have a few tries at it. So the aim is to dissect straight down the centre of the column and straight through the ovary. We've got the petals and the calyx below got the, the column which encases the stigma and style and we've got the anthers uh, which are attached to the filament so there's lots of anthers with pollen on them which is making my nose itch. <laughs> so uh, as I say the, the aim is now sometimes it's better to secure a plant and uh, a flower in place to cut it other times it's it's just as easy to cut through it um, by holding it but you can secure it with a wire you can put something in it if you want to to hold it in place and the foam board's useful because it keeps it attached. I tend to go straight through the center it just to hold it into the foam board. And then aim to go straight down the center. You can't get into it immediately, you can do it in part. away at it slightly on this one because as I say it's got this column in it so I want to expose the centre of the column but I don't want to go straight through it um, so far as to remove parts that I don't want to remove. I'm actually going to take this one off the wire to go through. I have to be very careful not to um, go through your fingers with this better to cut it slightly short. It's also, you can take away the front few petals as well if you want to first. Sometimes that makes it easier. You can just cut them away with your scalpel initially so you can get a better look at it. Obviously the smaller the flower is, the more difficult this is. I've chosen, I've chosen a large flower. It's easier to show you. So I'm trying to cut through the column without going too far through it. through the ovary there and down the centre. And that's given me a good dissection of the ovary. I probably want to take a little bit more off it. So I can just shave away with the knife just to get straight into the centre.
And what I tend to do then is either take um, a dressmaking pen, it's quite good for this because it's quite firm, or two, or the wire. <coughs> take a separate, separate piece of foam board and I put that through the back. You can see that. Pat that through the back of the foam board as straight as possible. I didn't put that through very straight because I'm watching the screen. Uh, and push it through like so and skewer the flower through the ovary or the pedicle into position. Deadly. And again, be careful. And that positions your flower into place for just a cross section of it. If I need to take any more away, then I can take the scalpel away. Take the scalpel down. I can take more away from the centre. I could also dissect through the stem. I don't particularly want to do that here. But you can see, you can maybe see <coughs> that we've got a cross section straight, straight through the column showing both the male parts and the female parts. She's actually lower. What happens as the, <coughs> as the flower um, enters the different phases, it moves from the male phase when the, when the male parts are receptive. The female part <coughs> grows up through the column emerges out of the centre top. Now, as well as uh, the dissection that I've already completed here, which is just cut straight through the centre, I'll also want to take out the parts um, to draw by removing everything away and, and showing the actual reproductive organs in full. So I'm going to remove the petals by just cutting them away at the base with the scalpel. Okay, very careful. You can do this on the board, I'm just doing it above it so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm also going to remove okay. and just peel these away by hand easier than putting them in the scalpel or if they're more difficult, I'll lay them flat on the board and remove them. I don't want to cut through any parts. I just want to remove them from the centre. There's lots of pollen flying around. Going to carefully. Now inside this particular flower, encased within that column, we can remove the ovary and reveal it and actually just pull out to find the female centre by pulling away. I've got half of the, the column there with the anthers attached. Inside that, there's the stigma. I'll trim away at the bottom. Very carefully. You can see the you can see the stigma there that was encased within it. It's actually open out. So this grows up in the female phase of the flower. 
you can see the style and the over it at the bottom there. We'll just tidy up around the bottom, that's sufficient to uh, draw. I'll probably draw that at times two and again skewer it. onto the board. Just tidy it up a bit. I'll probably use the finer wire for this because it's quite delicate. Take the wire, put it through the base. What you'll find is that all different flowers have various different arrangements. This one's got the column with the stigma encased. Many of them have got the stigma exposed. Um, I'd normally just clip that off. See it through. I've got a little pin for that to go through. Put that blue Peter. Feed it through that way. Obviously, once you cut the parts, you do actually work quite quickly because they soon die. When you've got a larger flower, such as a tulip or something, you can actually cut that, dissect the this piece um, without having to take it. You can actually do it on a board and keep the stem in water and just strip away the front of the flower. If it won't go through, just bend it over, make it a bit stiffer. Hold it in position for me for drawing. I normally use a, a magnifying glass as well, um, this makes it life a bit easier so that you can see the parts a bit more clearly. You can also draw, draw the exterior casing or just take the whole. Um, male female reproductive parts. I could use this one as well. Trim away the base of it and that's what encases the stigma with the anthers and the filaments within that column. And that's about it really, just for a basic dissection as much as you need. Okay so I've also um, pinned on my board, uh, I've taken off the petals and uh, pinned an entire uh, male female part here as well. You can see the, the stigma poking out of the top of the column there, and the anthers, which are that's the best now, they've sort of most of the pollen is gone, the white pollen and um, rounded ends have disappeared. So I've, I've got three separate versions here. Depends on what you want to show really. I, I've shown with petals, dissection, uh, showed the female parts of the ovary and I've shown the male female parts, could also show just the male parts. Um, you know, it depends on how much you want to include really. You can include a petal, uh, particularly if you've got um, three outer and three inner petals that vary slightly, like on a tulip, which are tepals actually, not petals, it's a, where they don't have any sepals, they just have um, petals and uh, tepals. Uh, so there's, there's this version here. Now what I would do at this phase is, is measure everything and make a note of all the measurements. So I would mention the length of the column, the width, um, as many measurements as you can possibly take. Um, you can also see how that female part has actually grown out of the top. It's longer and it will get longer still. Sometimes they grow, it'll start off within the column hidden somewhere down and grow gradually up as it enters the female phase here. So um, you can see actually the difference there. That one was completely encased and beneath the column and this one is actually longer. 
So take as many measurements and observations as you can, write them all down, then you can scale it up. Once you've got those measurements, heights, widths, um, you can scale things up. So I just write on my board or on a piece of paper, just um, take to it or post-it note, as many measurements as possible. You can't have too many really, so widths, heights, widths, widest parts, things like that. Same as you do with the leaves really, but um, for the uh, reproductive parts. And that's about it really for the basic dissection. As I say, you can include more parts and take off the individual um, anthers and filaments and measure them too, you know, so they could go alongside. But you start to get into smaller and smaller parts. And as I say, the smaller the parts are, the more difficult and the more chance you'll need magnification to do it. But I would suggest for your first attempt, try slightly larger flowers. Just to highlight the male-female phase within a flower, just one final thing here for you. You can see this, as I told you, here, you can see the, just the female part here, which is encased within this column. And here you can see where it's emerging um, from the column. And here in an older flower still, you can see it again sprayed out like that. The, evolutionary purpose of this male and female phase is to prevent self-pollination within a plant so it has various phases there's more chance of cross-pollination when you have a system like this where the um, various parts the male and female parts are receptive at different stages and that's basically what that uh, phasing, male female phasing is about. It doesn't happen in all flowers. Some flowers are quite happy to self-pollinate and they do anyway even though they have phases like this but it's just something you don't often see, you won't often see it illustrated and um, it's just something that I'm particularly interested in so I thought I'd share it with you but that's it's always worth observing the phases because you will see the changes in the flowers. Quite often they'll change once they become pollinated as well they change, the flowers change, the, the colour of the, leaf, uh, the uh, petals change and there's various different uh, aspects of the flower that change once it's been pollinated.